What is up guys, welcome back to another video on the Bronco build. So today what we're going to be doing is doing the front brakes and you can see this one's already done. I already did this one. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how to do it all over on this side. And this is just kind of what it looks like when it's done. Um, obviously I, I, need to, I need to do new brake lines in this thing. You can see, uh, yeah, they're all, you know... <laughs> gone so i'm gonna do those at some other point i wanted to do all of the uh you know the stuff down here before i went and ran all the lines and everything because i got a kit that has all the new lines and everything so eventually we'll, we'll be doing that but i already did the rears i have another video on those if you're wondering about that um we're also going to be installing new locking hubs um because well i kind of wanted to do this anyway because this truck has auto locking hubs and I'm really not not a very big fan of auto locking hubs. Uh, you can see the orange truck over here obviously has manuals. And uh, so yeah, we're going to swap those out at the same time. Because in order to get this rotor off, and you see how quick stuff corrodes once you get the, uh, <laughs> once you get, like, the coating off that they put on there. Um, yeah, they, they corrode pretty quick. But you have to take everything out of here you got to take your locking hub out you got to take your bearings out um and there's a whole bunch of other little stuff in there so while we're doing that i'm also going to show you guys how to install a uh a manual manual locking hub in there so and also by the way this is a 1993 bronco some of them are different this specific bronco does not have any bolts that hold the caliper on it's just these little clips or these uh these pins here and i'm bleeding um <laughs> it's just these pins all right I, this truck i believe has you know this is a 96 and this truck has uh bolts right there and right there that hold the caliper on so if you don't have well if you have, if you have, i think i think 93 was the last year um, that they use the pin, and then I think 94 or something like that, they went to the bolts. So if you have the the ones that have the bolts, you can just click off this video now, because it's not going to help you at all, unless you're trying to install a locking hub. But just a real quick update on the Zero One decals. Uh, I went and put the ceramic coating back over them after I, you know, put the decals on and waited a couple days. I don't think they're going to fall off. I think they're, uh, they're pretty much on there. So if you want to see the last video where we put those on, it is the, uh... The last video there that i posted but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel back on and then we will get you're gonna need this as well <laughs> i'll show you what tools you need in a second i'm gonna get this down off the ground get the other wheel off and then we'll uh get going on that so probably the most important tools that you're gonna need for this you're gonna need something to remove a c-clip okay and i'm gonna use this for um i'm not going to use it how it's designed how you're supposed to do it it's it's for snap ring so you can pull a snap ring apart and you know take the snap ring off i'm going to use that um to remove a c-clip but you're going to need something that, that that can take a c-clip off you're going to need a couple different screwdrivers all right just you know find one that works or whatever uh you don't you don't actually need that um main thing you're going to need is one of these sockets all right uh you're going to need this to take out the um the axle nut and everything that's all inside there once you're trying to get the rotor off you're gonna need one of these um to get the axle nuts off this is a you can probably read that what size that is right there um you need a hammer and a torque wrench and that's pretty much it maybe a couple other little things you are either going to need an impact wrench or a um like a, a press of some kind for when we have to deal with the wheel studs. Um, I'm going to use an impact wrench for that. You could use a big hammer if you wanted to, but you'll see how, how that goes back together once we get this apart. So first step, get this wheel off here. If any of you guys are wondering, these are the uh, US, yeah, uh, US Mags Indy wheels. I think they look pretty sweet, especially on a... Uh, you know, Bronco and whatnot. And these are 35s. Let's we'll set that right there. All right. First thing you got to do is take the caliper off. And like I was saying before on the other side, there's no bolts. You just have these pins here. Um, and you're going to have to just take a hammer and a screwdriver and take these and punch them out. And they're going to slide out that way. Ha! 
kind of helps too if you compress it like try to squeeze them together a little bit kind of loosen them up because <clears throat> these have been in here since you know 1993 so they're a little uh hesitant but they will come out see because the thing is too you've got these little clips here all right you got a little bump uh right there all right which is stopping it from going past this here so you kind of need to squeeze them together a little bit before they'll before they'll smash out There we go, that one's through. All right. Getting them started is the hardest part. You can see there, it just kind of pops right out the back after you get it moving. All right, and you gotta do the same thing with the uh, bottom one down here. Alright, so once you get these out, <clears throat> there's pretty much nothing else that holds the caliper on except for its own, uh, you know, just kind of being fit in between these two pieces here. There's nothing else holding it on, as long as you take, up, take off your, uh, you know, your brake hose there, which mine was already off, but... Let's give it some wax, and it will come right off. All right, you can see that is really bad. That is really bad. Ugh, I got brake fluid all over me. Um, all right, so that's off. Really, really disgusting. Um, your inner brake pad might be stuck to here. So you might have to just knock that off. Uh, and then also there is a little clip here it normally comes off with the pad this clip here um, you're gonna have to also remove this clip but I'm gonna do that once I get the rotor and everything all off because you have to put a new clip on it's like it makes it so the inner brake pad doesn't rattle all over the place um, this little metallic little metal clip right there all right so this is where the fun part begins first you got to start by taking out your lock and hub right because it's not like a normal um, like a like a brake rotor on a car or something where you just you know take the lug nuts off remove the caliper and then you can just kind of smack the rotor a whole bunch and then it comes off it it comes you, you gotta take everything apart to get this rotor off so um these are actually not allen wrenches some of them are allen wrenches you can see my allen wrench fits in there but i believe they're actually like a t25 torx um at least on this truck so you can just see you just gotta take all of these all these little bolts out and don't worry about um well if it if you're changing to locking hubs like i am uh you're not going to be reusing any of these little screws or nothing um so it really doesn't matter if you break them i mean you shouldn't you're not gonna break them but what i'm saying is you don't need to reuse these if if you are changing to a manual locking hub so i'm just gonna get these out yeah, it's not exactly the right size Torx, or the, yeah, it's not, it, this Torx is not the exact right size for this Allen key, but it gets the job done. And there's also these little, uh, <clears throat> little spacers, washers, whatever, to keep all the grease from coming out. So if you are reusing them, just don't, don't lose those. All right, so we've got all these out. And then, as you can see, this cap is already trying to come off here. So once all those are out, this is spring loaded, right? <clears throat> so that comes off. And what I'm going to do is, I, I'm, at, I'm even though I'm not reusing them, I'm, I'm going to save all of the automatic hub parts. Um, you know, just in case maybe someday I could sell them or something. I don't know if anybody would even want them. But I'm going to use this as a tray for all the parts that I take out of this. I'm going to put onto here. That way they all stay in the correct order um, so they don't get mixed around.
even though I'm not reusing any of them. All right, so next, once you have your, you know, your little cap off, there's this little guy. You gotta pull him out, all right? Put him somewhere where he won't get lost. And then you have, let's see if I can zoom in on this so you guys can see it. Right there, you see those two little pins? This guy here, and there's another one here. You gotta squeeze those together, all right? And this is kind of gonna be a, a pain in the ass. So I don't have exactly the right tools for it, but you're just gonna kind of try to squeeze them together. And once you get them squeezed together, this entire automatic locking hub is going to slide out. All right, so once you get a firm hold on those, squeeze them together, and then this whole thing is gonna come out. So that's what that is, all right? It's just this, you know, metal thing. You gotta squeeze them together so that they go into this groove so that way that it'll slide out. But you're gonna take this and put it right there in your, oops, I lost that top piece there. I'm just gonna throw this back in here, all right? Just, uh, yeah, it's a little, little dirty. All right, <clears throat> so now you got that off. Next thing you're going to have to do is there's a C-clip in there, all right? So you can see right here, there's this C-clip. You can see it, I'm spinning it around right there. So what you gotta do is either get in there with some picks or something. I wish it was a little brighter in there so you guys could see better. Um, get in there with some picks or something and you have to just pull that C-clip off. So what I'm actually gonna do is take this tool, like I was saying earlier, it's made for taking off snap rings. And let me actually zoom this out a tiny bit. All right, so this is made for taking off snap rings, but what I'm gonna do is place it right on top of both sides of this C-clip here. Uh, if I can get it on there, like that, all right? And it's all blurry. I'm gonna get it on top of both sides of the C-clip, and then I'm gonna just kind of smack this tool down with a hammer, all right? I'm gonna back you guys up a tiny bit. You can see it in there, see the C-clip in there. Um, so now I'm just going to take a hammer and try to whack that out. You know what? I didn't even need the freaking hammer. It just fell, it just fell out. The other side did not just fall out. <laughs> but once I started pushing down on this one, it just fell out. So anyway, that was a real pain for me to get out on the other side. But on this side, it just, uh, you know, fell right out. Anyway. So there's that. So next, there is a spacer right in there. All right, and that comes out pretty easy. You've just got to grab a hold of it. And wiggle it off like so. And it is grooved, too, so you got to have it lined up uh, with the grooves. Give it a little wiggle. And there she be. Put her over there make sure i'm keeping everything in order so next you've got this big uh nut right here all right so you're going and that that nut isn't really torqued down actually no that one is the one that's torqued down quite a bit so what you're gonna have to do is get your socket on there all right get your breaker bar stick it in like so and this this socket's kind of a pain in the ass as well back you guys up again Socket's kind of a pain in the ass because it's only got these four little prongs on it, right? Um, so yeah, anyway, you, gotta, you just gotta get in there with this. This is why you really definitely need this socket, all right? Get it on there like so. Kind of, it just kind of wiggles, so you kind of gotta hold it in place while you're using it. That one's really on there. Once you get it loosened up, you can just pretty much take it off by hand. All right, so there's that. All right, and don't confuse this one with the one, there's also an inner one, all right? The inner one has is the one that has the bump protruding from it. Uh, and that bump is to 
hold on this guy right here. You can see, let's see, uh, get you guys a little closer. All right. So you can see there's this bump right here that's going through and it's keeping this in place. So you just kind of got to give this thing a little wiggle. Get in there with this maybe. No, nope, that's too big. I'll use my bent screwdriver. Take that piece out like so. Throw it over here with my parts to discard. All right, actually, <laughs> don't discard that. You actually need that one. But anyway, this one is just finger tight, all right? So the only thing you're gonna need to keep if you're changing to a manual hub like me is those last three pieces that we took off, okay? So this one here that is just finger tight and it just screws off, you're gonna need to, to save the, uh, the piece before this that had all the little holes in it, and you're gonna have to save the other one of these uh, actual nuts. This guy just kind of comes on right off like so. All right. So your, your old rotor now is loose, all right, once you get that second axle nut off there. But don't take it off yet. Go find your new rotor, all right. Bust him open. And I'm gonna use this as kind of a, kind of a workstation to keep everything out of the dirt, all right. Put him here. I'm going to take the old rotor off, all right, <clears throat> after I take out my inner wheel bearing, okay. I'm going to need to get in there with the screwdriver and fish them out of there. my inner bearing I could have just I'm just gonna take it all off I'm gonna put it over there on my work surface that's pretty gross so I'm oh <laughs> look at that there's my uh, my brake pad there <laughs> I thought it fell off before but it didn't but um yeah there's that. And this is freaking dirty, so we're going to have to go ahead and clean all of this up. And I'm just going to discard this uh, dust shield because, yeah, it's uh, it's destroyed. Alright, so here is my bearing. Alright, this is the old bearing. I'm not going to replace these bearings. It actually looks okay. Um, I didn't replace the one on the other side either because, well, they're perfectly fine. This truck only has, I believe... I don't know, 50 something thousand miles on it. These these bearings, I think they're I think they're okay. So I'm just gonna reuse them. Alright, so I'm gonna put that somewhere where it's safe. Now your inner bearing uh, is back here. Look at how gross this is. I'm also gonna reuse the inner bearing, okay, and the inner bearing doesn't come out um like the outer one does. It's got a seal right here and everything else to keep all the grease in. So we're just gonna we're gonna just gonna leave him alone. Alright, we're gonna add a little extra grease to him in a minute. When we go to put everything back together, um, just because this grease is, you know, eh, a little dirty. We're just going to add some fresh grease in there. Um, now, I saw one video. <clears throat> this guy was trying to show you how to get this off here. This is your ABS ring, okay? Now, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how this comes off, and I ended up going and watching a video, and this guy, he took a, uh, you know, a little air hammer to it and just broke it all to pieces. You don't have to do that. Okay, so this this is here. This is kind of how this works. You got this little guy here. All right, this works for your ABS, and it just kind of is like a you know sensor or whatever for this thing. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up. I don't expect the ABS on this truck to work. I also don't feel like fixing it. I don't know. We'll see about that a little bit longer down the line. But if the ABS ends up actually working, this is not. You don't want this to be all rusted. All right, you want it to be you know nice clean metal so that it can communicate with all the other mumbo jumbo um in there so what you're gonna do now don't mess with your old bear or your rear 
sparing there and don't mess with any of those seals unless of course you're replacing them next thing you have to do is bust out your wheel studs here um i'm just gonna take a hammer i'm gonna take an old um an old lug nut screw that on there and then i'm just gonna tap those all out one by one you don't need to i'll show you in a second you don't need to use a freaking air hammer to break the abs ring apart you just need to smash these out further and then the abs ring falls off look we got a little friend there a little spider so i'm gonna go ahead and do that now all right so the point of using an old lug nut is so that you don't end up messing up all of your threads all right because what you're gonna do is take your hammer here and give that a whack until it pops through the back all right and then you can take your lug nut off and that probably wasn't the strongest lug nut to try that with <laughs> you can see it it dented in there but you can see all right now this doesn't go any further than that because it is being stopped by the abs ring all right and you cannot see it back there but it is there and it's ramming into the abs ring so what you have to do is take it a little step further all right i'm going to put my put my thing back on put my lug nut back on take him and just give him a couple more whacks all right but the thing is you kind of i mean you could you could do it like that you know i was just <laughs> all right i'm actually gonna just abandon these freaking lug nuts dude <laughs> i was gonna try to do it so i wasn't messing them up but they're actually bottoming out before i can get the abs ring off so just a couple of quick hits now it's not gonna hurt anything so you can see that ah, abs ring off so are all of your wheel studs we're gonna go ahead and set that to the side yep so there's all your wheel studs you're gonna want to save those all right and you can see they are you got these little you know whatever the hell they call those so that it doesn't uh turn when it's in there you know when you're tightening your lug nuts up and stuff so we're gonna put these to the side we're gonna clean up this abs ring with a wire brush okay um we're actually gonna put that bearing somewhere so it doesn't get full of shit now here, here's the other thing you gotta do, all right? You gotta separate these two pieces here. So you just take your hammer and just give it some wax, all right? Probably not on that part. Oh, that worked. So anyway, give it a couple wiggles here and all that is gonna slide out. So, there's your inner bearing. That's why you gotta take the ABS ring off because it won't be able to fit through the rotor with it on. So, there's that. We don't need this anymore. This is junk. And we're gonna take our new rotor. All right, first I'm gonna clean this up. All right, make it so that it's, uh, you know, not all gunky and got dirt in it and whatever else. And I'm gonna end up putting some new grease in both of those bearings. Well, Mostly just the inner or the outer bearing. The inner bearing, I'm just kind of kind of clean it up and you know put some grease in there so it doesn't. Uh, I'm not going to take all this apart because you can't take this apart without breaking this seal. And I don't have one. I didn't buy one, so I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to try to repack that bearing as good as I can. All right. So there's multiple different ways that you can do this, but what we have to do is press our uh, our old wheel studs back into everything that we just uh slammed out so this guy here you can go into this guy like this and now these winger wheel studs here have got to go back through the back side and poke out through the top so <clears throat> you could try to use a hammer or whatever and slam, slam them all back through uh but what i'm gonna do get them all in there and then use the impact and pull them back up so let's see what you're gonna need is either a bunch of washers or this is actually from the uh the body mounts on the truck um so here i'm actually gonna flip this over i'm gonna get all of these kind of in place just kind of give them a, a real quick whack with the hammer just to get them in place so they don't fall back out uh while i'm trying to work on the other side there and then, then I'll show you what we have to do with that washer. 
go falling back out on me now while I'm trying to do all of this. Um, so we, what you got to do is you got to put this washer on here, and then you got to put one of your lug nuts back on. like so, get this guy back on there. And then you're gonna use your impact and you're gonna pull each of them back through. So you can see there's, um, let's see if we zoom in on that. See how it's not fully seated, right? You just gotta use your impact and fully seat them. Now, you don't gotta really worry about stripping them because what I said before, how they have those little uh, you know, slices in them so they kinda are made to dig into the rotor. Um, so you don't have to really worry about stripping them. I just go until they feel tight, you know, like you, you don't need to really hammer the hell out of them, but you also want them to be fully seated. So once I do this one, I'll show you what a fully seated one looks like, and then I'll go ahead and do the rest. actually come up a little bit more than that. Get this back on here. It can come up a little bit more. Ah. Alright, so you can see the difference. If that compressor was not too loud. This one fully seated. This one, not so much. So I'm just going to do that to the rest of them. All right. Give, give that a second to calm down. Um, <laughs> you can see here, all the wheel studs now are all fully uh, seated there. So now what I'm going to do, I've already, I already kind of re-greased that back bearing as best as I could, and then I repacked this front one, um, or the inner and the outer, whichever. So that's that. So that's pretty much ready to go back in after we put on our ABS ring. And uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and ditch all of the, um, you know, this it's just it's just junk like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna get rid of it um you you don't you don't really need it i mean i don't know some people argue that you do some people argue that you don't my orange truck doesn't have one it hasn't had one for the last five years i haven't had any problems so i'm i'm not even gonna bother putting it back on um i'm gonna clean this all back up you can see our spindle looks perfectly fine all right there's no you know deep scratches or cuts or you know gouges or anything in it so i'm going to clean it up i'm going to put some new grease on it and then we're going to start putting stuff all back together with our new uh locking hub here so yeah i'm going to go ahead i'm just going to start i'm just going to clean all this up we're going to pound on that new or pound on the old uh abs ring and then we'll keep going That's gross. Even the freaking, you know, <laughs> the chipmunks and the mice and everything that were all in the interior uh, have all also taken over everything outside. And ow, brake clean hurts and cuts that where I was bleeding earlier. <laughs> I got brake clean and that's a little stinging. I'm gonna use my wire brush and I'm gonna brush all that. In here too, this is where your new uh, inner brake pad is going to go. So you're going to want to have that cleaned up. Maybe throw a little bit of grease on there um, if you feel like it. I probably won't. I actually, actually no, I'm not, I'm not going to put any grease on that. I'm not going to put any grease on that. But you definitely want it to be cleaned up there. And up here as well, this is where it mounts on the top. 
just make it, uh, you know, might put a little grease on the top one, but on the bottom there's that clip, so it's kind of, kind of would defeat the purpose of putting any grease on it. Look at that, nice and clean. It's a little bit of wear on it, but not, you know, nothing too bad, so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some more grease on that. See if I, uh, I don't feel like getting my fingers dirty again. So I'll just use this rag here. I've got like a really crummy tripod. I honestly have my phone. I used to film with a GoPro. I don't do that anymore. So now I have my phone and it's duct taped to this uh, tripod. It works. It's not the prettiest, but you guys don't have to look at it. Um, hit this with some, hitting the back side of the rotor real quick. Get any grease off of there that I might have put on. And then we can uh, go ahead and give it the old slip -a -roo. So that's on there. Gonna get our uh, our new. Well, it's not new. I honestly should have just replaced all this stuff, but I didn't. Get our bearing here. Outer bearing. Shove him in there. Get him all the way in the back, <clears throat> like so. And then we've got to take all those little nuts and everything that we took off before and put them back on. So. The one that goes in first, if you remember, is this guy here. All right, let's, uh, actually, he's got a little dirt on him. We'll get him off. We'll get hit, get the dirt cleaned off of him. So he goes in first, and the little bump here sticks outward. All right, so you can get the, uh, this, the next piece on him. Get him on there. I'm actually going to grease it up a little bit in there before I put him in. See a movie guys over here so you can see what's going on. Makes it easier to put everything back together too if you've got you know grease on it and whatnot. Alright. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the inside as well. <laughs> it's a you know what? I could have just put this put more grease on it before. When I was greasing it all up. Didn't think I'd really need to. I'm just going to freaking load the hell out of it. I'm just going to get all those threads all nice and greased up. All nice and greased up. Because I felt a little resistance. I don't like resistance. We have to do some really funky stuff uh, with this nut when it comes to torque specs. Um, I'm just going to go double check what those torque specs have to be. Because what you're doing is you're sandwiching your uh, your freaking bearing there in between this nut and in between, you know, the, the bearing races inside of here. Um, so you don't want it to be too tight uh, on the f on the first one. It just it it, it just kind of needs to hold the bearing in place. The second one that you put in is the one that really uh, holds everything together. So once you get this one hand tight, there's, there's some funny torque specs. We'll get to that right now. All right, so here on our inner one, all right, we are going to do 50 foot pounds, all right? And now, after you do the 50 foot pounds, you're supposed to back it off a little bit and then do it again to well something else something else in inch pounds i don't exactly i don't exactly remember you but we're gonna do it the exact way that i did it on the other side okay i'm gonna show you how i'm doing it if you want to do it a different way then that is totally up to you all right um let's get this way the hell down to 50 
Okay, so we got it torqued to 50, right? 50 foot pounds. Now, this doesn't exactly spin when you torque it to 50 foot pounds. So, what I'm going to do now, all right, which is what I can see basically everybody else is doing, is torquing it to 50. I swear, this is the most annoying socket in the friggin' world. Because it doesn't even fit tight. Like, it fits loose. It's just a really stupid... I don't know, maybe I'm stupid. But it's, uh... It's a real pain in the ass, this socket is. So anyway, I'm going to take it. I'm going to back it off like a maybe quarter half turn. Something like that. So we can get this spinning nice and free again. And then I'm going to torque it again. But I'm not going to let it click. All right. I'm just going to get it on there. And just give it... A little bit of a turn to the right. This is the biggest pain in the ass. Because because this thing doesn't... It kind of goes through here. And then it is hitting this. So it doesn't... Uh, it's, just, it's just not a very good... It's just not very fun, you know? It's just not, just not very fun. So anyway, try it again. Get this bad boy on there. Give it a little bit of a turn. All right, and I think we're probably good. All right, if that's not good, then I don't know what is good because that is the best that I can do. The nut is on there. It is more than finger tight, and when we took it off, it was finger tight. And this spins freely, so I think, I think that's gonna be our answer. All right, so next, we're gonna take, and that's exactly what I've done the other side, so if I lose two wheels, then, well, then I lose two wheels. <clears throat> Highly unlikely. Um, all right, where's that piece? All right, so now I'm going to put this guy back in, all right, before we put on the outer axle nut. Make sure it's cleaned off first. And this one, it has a, you see the little groove right here? Or it fits into the groove. So you got to get it in the groove and then you got to get it lined up with the uh, the pin on the other one there. Okay, so that was kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass. As you can see, the wheel spins freely and I've got it lined up with the, with the pin on there. So now we're good to go ahead and take our next one here, which all my stuff is freaking dirty. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this to make it slide easier. Put this guy on, and we're going to torque this one at 150, all right? That is the information that I have found on the internet, <laughs> is that we're going to torque this one at 150. Like I said, you know, you guys can do whatever other torque specs that you might find on the internet. You could, you know, break out the manual and find it in there, I suppose. But... That's what I'm doing. So. I had it backwards. All right, get this guy in here like this. Get him hand tight and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do him at 150. All right, that's 150. All right, so we got him at 150. Spins pretty good. And we're gonna go ahead and put in the new locking hub here. So at this point, you just gotta take this bad boy here, right, and slip him on over the shaft like so. Okay, so this is the worn locking hub all right if you get a I, I, be, I, know, I believe they're all pretty much the same but i have one little uh clip here and then i've also got this big ring right here zoom out a little so a little clip in the big ring so once you go ahead and you pop your your new locking hub in and obviously if you're keeping your automatic hub you would have just had to put all of those pieces and everything in there 
Um, there's a ridge right here. You can see this is all grease. I'm gonna get that grease back in there. Kind of popped out a little when I uh, <clears throat> when I pushed it through. So this little clip, all right? We're gonna get our snap ring pliers here. Try not to drop them. Take this little guy. It's easier if you put it on the bottom first. Hold it with one finger there. Spread it open. Bring him around the top. Now he's on there. And then your next one, this big ring here, just kind of goes in. And there's a groove that it snaps into. So at that point, you can take your new worn lock and hub. Make sure you got it set to free. All right. And now these little I don't know, things protruding from it are going to go into these holes here. Like so. And then you've just got all of your new bolts that are actually Allen keys, unlike the uh, Torx bits that come in the, uh, or they come on the stock ones. So you got all these little Allen keys. You go ahead and you throw all those in there. And then you're all set and you're all done inside there. So. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all these up and then we will start putting on the brake pads and the calipers. All right, so we've got our, got this all cleaned up. You don't, you know, you gotta make sure you get all the grease off of here or else, you know, your brakes aren't really gonna work too well. Um, <laughs> And then I greased up these, okay. Now we have our new calipers, or our new one caliper, and then our new brake pad. So that's gonna be your outer pad, and this here is gonna be your inner pad. All right, make sure you don't have any grease on those either. Um, well, you can grease the backs, I'm gonna grease the backs, but you know, just don't get grease on the braking surface itself. And then you've got this, and you can tell which side goes to which, uh, because it's going to sit like this, and the bolt, well, here. It's going to sit like this, and your bolt is going to be in the, on the back side. If you, if you try to put it the other way, it's uh, not really correct. You know, you got to do it, you got to do it like this. So, <clears throat> you can see how that's kind of going to fit in there. But what we got to do first is take our... Uh, our pad here. I'm going to grease the back and then we also have our Let's move that real quick our new little <clears throat> Our new little pins here and in the bag with all the little pins Oops There's this guy here. He's just going to kind of clip on to Let's see so it's kind of the square part goes in it clips on like that. Where does it go the other way? I think it goes this way. No, no, it definitely goes the other way. So that guy's gonna clip on there like that. Just like that, there we go. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna grease the back of this a little bit with my rag that's already got grease on it, dirt, whatever the hell else. Just a little bit. I'm gonna make sure that the front side is clean. And of course my hands are filthy as hell. But this will help. Spray that guy down. I think he's probably all set. I'm gonna take him and we're gonna put him in the back here. All right, he's gonna slip in the back and then he slips into his groove up on the top there as well. So you're gonna kinda need to have to depress the, uh, that little clip there. It's really hard to do this with one hand. I should put you guys back on the stupid tripod thing. That's That's my setup there. All right, so I had this clip on the other side, on the wrong side. It actually has to go on this side because if you put it on the side that I just put it on, you're gonna have, oops. You're gonna have a bad time. It's gotta go like this. <laughs> Cause I, I just accidentally tried to put it on, you know, that way. Easy, simple mistake to fix. And she's just gonna pop right on in there like this. There we go. All right, yep, just make sure you don't have your pads flipped around or else you're gonna be, look like an idiot like me. 
All right, so I put a little grease on the back side of this guy. Not a whole lot. I'm actually going to put a tiny... I'll put a tiny little bit more. What the hell, man? It ain't going to hurt nothing as long as I don't get it on the pad surface. So that's that. We're going to do that. That's how we are going to do it. All right, now we got our caliper here. Make sure there's no leaves in it. And now this guy... <clears throat> this guy here... It's gonna sit right in like right in here like that okay and being careful not to drop that I'm gonna go ahead and put it right on over the top here get that in there and now we have to get our pins in all right and it's actually oh I got this in the freaking dirt man that's the problem, you know, if I had a, a garage or something, you know, <laughs> I should have cleaned the ground first, but knocking all the rust off of it before just kind of made the ground all dirty. All right. So now we got these guys. All right. I'm going to, you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. So we got our pins here. <clears throat> You know, you guys remember how these go. We're going to take them and we're going to grease them up. All right. Making sure that our uh, back pad doesn't fall off of there. You know, you got to make sure it stays there. Um, it shouldn't fall off. But we're going to grease these up. All right. Big old whole bunch of grease. Take them in there. And we're going to get this guy in position. Like so. Take one of our pins. Kind of got to squeeze it a little bit. <clears throat> squeeze it a little bit. Now it's really slippery. You got to do the bottom one first. The, the, then the top one's a lot easier once you get the bottom one in. All right. Just take them, shove them in there like that. Give them a couple taps just so it doesn't fall back out. Then we're going to take a top one here. Give him a good old liberal amount of slippery fluid take them in there jam them in give them some taps oh baby we done dropped them we done dropped them <sighs> clean them off a little all right go okay now we're just gonna plow them through up into the point where there's the little stops that are on the uh, little stops that are on there There we have it. All right, so that's the end of that. Once you get these pins back in, you're pretty much right back at the uh, the beginning. And uh, yeah, now you'd probably go through and you know bleed your brakes and whatnot. But I don't have any uh, brake lines or anything to do that with yet. So I'm gonna have to do the brake lines. Probably that'll be the next thing that I do uh, is put all new brake lines in this thing. You can see <laughs> there's one right there. It's all freaking mangled. Um, and this is also why my ABS isn't going to work. They chewed straight through it. Um, this would go and plug into there. But it uh, yeah, it obviously doesn't work anymore. Actually, is that even the same? It looks like green in there. I don't know. Anyway, so that's the brakes. Um, new locking hub installation. And uh, yeah. Anyway, make sure to leave a like on this video if maybe it, uh, it taught you something or maybe you just liked watching me struggle. And uh, if you have any other tips and tricks for other people that are doing this, make sure to leave it in the comment section. Uh, if I did something wrong, well, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's going to do it for today. And uh, thank you all for watching.